Welcome uh, YouTube viewers, uh, welcome to Frank Art Channel. Today we're going to learn how to do a leak down test. So this is the test that you do after the compression test. So this will be more precise. We're going to do this on this engine and uh, let's see what tools we need. So the, the leak down test, it tells us the condition of the valves because to build compression, uh, it's between the valves and the two compression rings that we have here. So between the compression rings and the valves is what builds the compression. So we're going to see if the valves are gone or uh, the rings are gone on this particular engine. So for this test, the stuff that you're going to need, the tools, you're going to need uh, the gauge, the leak down gauge. We're going to need spark plug socket. We're going to need uh, 3 8 ratchet. We're going to need a breaker bar to spin the crankshaft. Uh, for this particular engine, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket that fits on the crankshaft. Uh, we're going to need a torque wrench to put the plugs back in. And we're just going to need use this rod. You'll see where I use this rod. We're going to use this rod to find out when we're at the top dead center. Um, so let's get rolling. So first thing, we got to take all the plugs out. I mean, if you have wires, depending on the engine that you're working on, you got to number the wires, remove all the wires. In this case, it's just on the sand. I'm just teaching or showing how the compression test or the leak down test is done. So we are going to remove all four plugs from this engine. So one, two, three, four, take them all out. So we're going to put the, the hose for the gauge. Uh, this does come with different fittings depending on the engine that you work on. In this case, this will fit. So we're, this is just hand tight, screw it in into number one cylinder, number one, two, three, four. So we're going to screw it into number one cylinder. Uh, so now we need to spin the crankshaft. We need our breaker bar and 17 millimeter socket. And what we're going to do at the top is, I mean, you can put your finger here and feel when the pressure is coming up. What uh, works even better is if you just put a balloon on it and we are spinning the crankshaft, as soon as number one cylinder is at the end of top dead center or, at, or going up on, the, uh, on compression stroke, both valves are closed, piston coming up, this balloon is going to start filling up. That will tell you that we are um, coming up on compression stroke on number one cylinder. So let's spin it. So I'm spinning the crankshaft. Nothing happening yet, so we're going to keep spinning it. There we go. So now you see that there. So we are coming up on compression stroke, which means both the valves are closed. Piston is coming up. That's why this thing is filling. So at this point, we'll take our balloon off, save it for a later day, take our gauge out. Now we need to bring the piston right to the top dead center. So I take the gauge out. We put that rod that I was showing you earlier. It could be any rod. I'm just using a welding rod. Put that in the spark plug hole. Okay. And now you got to um, spin it again. And we're going to go up. So you'll see here. Let me put some marks on it so you can see it coming up. It's hard to see there. I'm going to put just some random marks on it. So you will see it coming up. You'll know what I'm talking about. So we're going to start spinning this. See, that's coming up now. Look, so that's coming up. We're going to go right to the top dead center. Basically, we're going to go to the point where the piston starts going down. So there you go. That's the top dead center. If I spin it any more in the same direction, it's going to go down. See, that's going down now. So we got to come back, and we got to be right at the top dead center. There, that's the top dead center. And this is what we're going to test. So now we are at the top dead center. We're going to put our, uh, the hose for the gauge back in. Okay, so just screw it back in, just what we did before. Okay, put that back in. And the manufacturer of this gauge, uh, they recommend that we don't do this test with any more than 100 PSI. So our compressor here, it's set to about 80 85 PSI, that's what we're working with, okay? So it's very important that um, we back the gauge off all the way before we hook up the airline. So 
there's a lock on it, so you pull this down, unlock, push that up, it's locked. So pull that down and spin it counterclockwise all the way to counterclockwise. Okay? And then we take our gauge, so it's not hooked up on anything right now. We take the gauge from the, or the hose from the compressor, we hook that up, and then we start spinning it clockwise, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this gauge as close as possible to the zero. So I'm going to start turning this knob clockwise. No need to rush for this. Just slowly turn it. It's very sensitive. So let's get as close as possible to the zero. So I'm spinning it very little at a time. So even after I stop spinning it, sometimes the gauge moves forward. So you can still see like my, I'm not turning it, the gauge did move a tiny bit. So just get, like, as long as you get close to zero, we're good. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. So that's, I'm pretty happy with it. It's very close to zero. So it doesn't matter like what engine you check, there's always gonna be a leak in it. So what these gauges are telling us is that up to 40%, the engine is not so bad. There's, there's always gonna be a leak, okay? So we're gonna see where the leak is coming out. When you hook this up to the hose, it's recommended that someone is holding this crankshaft because sometimes when you hook this up, the air pressure will spin this around, okay? So it's recommended that someone is holding this. So we are going to hook this up and we'll see what the leakage is. As soon as I hook that up, you will, so I can lock this. As soon as I hook this up, you will see this gauge dropping and it'll show us what percentage leak do we have. So there we go, so we hooked it up. So this is actually not a bad engine, so it's less than 40% leak on it. And at this point, we're gonna see where the leak is coming from. And the way you do that is, if it's coming from the exhaust, so let's, let's stay with the intake, we have intake right here. So I'm gonna to listen to this. I'm gonna to listen to this and see if I can hear any air coming out of here. I don't hear that much. It's very little, but there is leakage. So if it's coming out of here, that means our intake valve is gone. If it's coming from the exhaust right here, so I listen to this, no, I don't hear anything. So if there was air coming out of the exhaust, that means the exhaust valve is leaking. Now we have the third spot, we're gonna take our oil cap off. You can listen to it at the dipstick or take the oil cap off. Oh yeah, I can hear it here. So if you bring the camera close, you'll, okay. So our majority of the leakage is coming, we can hear it from the, from the oil cap which is telling us that the leak is from, uh, from the rings, the compression rings. So at this point, we are done with cylinder number one. So we unlock it before you disconnect. Make sure, before you disconnect here or here, make sure you turn this all the way back to zero. And then we disconnect our compressor and then we can disconnect here and we pull our hose out. So the firing order for this engine is one, three, four, two, which means number one fires, number three fires, number four fires, and number two fires. So we already done number one. Without spinning anything, what we do is put the gauge in number three because that's the next one that should be coming up on compression stroke. Just to make sure, we will put our balloon back on and we're gonna spin the crankshaft, there, you saw that filling up, I didn't hold it properly, you saw that filling up, and we repeat the procedure for number three, then number four, and then number two. Uh, once you finish all four cylinders, we're gonna put our plugs back in, so there's a rubber boot in here that holds the plug, that's why the spark plug sockets are uh, special. Uh, when you're putting the plugs back in, please don't start putting a ratchet on here and start spinning. Just turn the, the I don't want these cross-threaded, just turn with your fingers, get
get all four plugs back in. Uh, so you've, once you got all the plugs back in, get the torque wrench, set the torque. I would like you to find the torque. This video is for my students. So find the torque and torque it. We go first one torque, second one, third one, fourth one. And if you're doing this on the car, put the wires back in in the order they came off. And uh, that's it. Hopefully this made sense. And thank you for supporting us and thank you for watching.